Hi, I'm Jasim Khwaja. As a secretary of the Banking and Finance Subgroup of the United Arab Emirates Internal Auditors Association, it is my privilege to host Mr. Biju Nair, who is the existing chairman of the Banking and Finance Subgroup of the UAE Internal Auditors Association, and is also the chief audit executive of one of the oldest bank here in the UAE, the United Arab Bank. Thank you, Jasim. It's an honor and privilege to talk to fellow internal audit professionals in the month of May, which is globally celebrated as the Internal Audit Awareness Month. Thank you, Mr. Biju. So I'll come straight to the questions. Uh, being CAE of one of the oldest banks in the UAE, that's the United Arab Bank, whereas we all know you are an engineer by profession or qualification. So how did that happen, uh, if you could just elaborate, because I'm sure people are curious to know about it. Uh, see, it's not rare for an engineer to become a CAE. Of course, you may not see many people from engineering background or engineering qualification becoming a chief audit executive. Um, recently, I came to know that the chairman of UAE Internal Audit Association, Mr. Abdul Qadir himself, is an engineer by qualification. So it's not that rare. Having said that, it, uh, that is the beauty of internal audit as a profession, right? You don't need to be an accountant, you don't need to be a finance professional um, to become an internal auditor. As long as you have the deep knowledge of the domain which you are working in, plus the right kind of attitude and a passion to acquire the skills on the way, you can become an uh, internal auditor and go all the way up to becoming a chief audit executive. Okay, so do you believe destiny played a role in your transformation from being an engineer to an auditor or to where you are today? It's not about destiny, of course, definitely destiny all plays a role in all our careers because we don't come into our starting of our careers aspiring to become a chief internal auditor, right? Um, so obviously, um, there was uh, twists and turns in my career which led up to me here. Um, 27 years now in the banking industry oh. uh, in uh, India and UAE. Um, 15 years back when I got an opportunity to move into internal audit, that was the right choice actually. Um, for me, that was a function where I could express myself independently without any, um, any uh, worries at all. Plus, I could see the organization from a 360 degree angle and learn a lot about the organization. Uh, that was probably my prime motive to move into internal audit. The last 15 years has clearly justified my decision and I am proud that I took that decision at that point of time. Absolutely, we have all witnessed that Mr. Biju. So as, I, as you said, you are an industry veteran I would call it, right? so with, with loads of experiences. If you could just shed some views on the, the transformation the profession has gone in, through in the last 15 years, 10 to 15 years. See, uh, two decades of internal auditing if you look at it, it has transformed a lot. Um, from re being a reactive audit function, now internal auditors are definitely more proactive. Um, again, uh, if you look at the past, we were kind of seen as policemen in some organizations. Uh, having said that, now uh, it has been actually a value added function, a partner. All these terms are being used very much in, in internal audit lexicon as well as the business senior managers lexicon as well. So that transformation happened already. I believe this is not the end of it. We are further going to transform in the future. Absolutely. So can we sum it up saying that uh, from policeman to trusted advisor or from pathologist to, to uh, radiologist, is that the way right thing to describe? <laughs> I like that. I like that way uh, being a pathologist to radiologist. Definitely, actually, uh, we were perceived as people who were looking at what happened in the past and uh, dissecting things from, uh, from the history. In fact, um, one of the definitions of internal auditor, uh, in the words of a good friend of mine, uh, 15 years back I heard that, uh, internal, auditor is those guys, internal auditors are those guys who come into a battlefield after the battle is over to count the dead bodies and bayonet those who are injured. Um, I think actually that was, of course, actually that is kind of a very cruel, but uh, that was a kind of perception at that point of time. I think from that time onwards, uh, internal audit has been transforming a lot. Uh, these days, I don't think we, we are seen as a pathologist or policemen. Uh, however, uh, definitely there is scope for improvement. Actually, in my view of internal audit, uh, internal audit as a function will further, further grow to become probably a 
a function which can predict what is going to happen if if the management can uh, see what is going to be the risk and control environment within the organization in the six months down the line or a year or a couple of years down the line nothing like that right so i think that is the value add which the latest technologies and the latest tools are helping us to become absolutely you have touched upon the right uh, note which was my next question the chat gpt the most spoken the highly spoken word around or the technology around so how do you think that will shape up the transformation or the pace of transformation within internal audit or will, will it make internal audit profession extinct yeah this is an interesting thing um, in many conferences we all must have heard about internal audit function becoming extinct in the next uh, five to ten years time um, again similarly actually i've been hearing about banking itself a lot of challenger banks and digital banks are coming up and uh, we are talking about conventional banks becoming Uh, legacy i don't believe in both i don't think that is how technology or innovation is going to uh, transform whether it is bank uh, field or internal audit space these are enablers uh, chat gpt for example definitely um, i urge internal auditors to go and see what the capabilities of chat gpt or other ai engines as well yeah, so these are tools which you should be using for improving your skill sets improving your approach to internal audit I believe these tools are enablers to improve efficiency of internal auditors. Uh, 20 years back, compared to 20 years back, definitely the efficiency has improved a lot with all these analytical skill sets coming in. You remember, actually, uh, in past, sampling was a key thing which we used to do, um, taking as minuscule sample and extrapolating to a much wider population to come to an opinion. These days, that is not being used that much. Actually, as long as we have good analytical tools, we can. analyze millions of transactions and come up with an opinion which is actually a real opinion based on the full transaction exceptions and all in a matter of seconds so i think these are enablers which will help internal auditors to be more more objective in their opinion making and advisory functions as advisory roles that they will be playing absolutely so rest assured we continue to be employed right <laughs> Yeah, so I, I think I, I would add on this one because I remember when I joined the finance profession, there was a lot of things being spoken about ERP is taking over the finance profession. But yeah, it has just evolved with Absolutely. the passage of time. So coming to my next question, do you think that these changes open the doors for especially non-auditors to become auditors uh, with with all these uh, techniques, tools, and and assisting techniques? Yeah, definitely. See. a successful internal audit function i always believe has a good mix of career auditors and people who have crossed over from the business side uh, i think that gives the lot of depth and intensity of what we we do as an internal audit function so of course there are there are opportunities for people from any uh, domain to cross over to internal audit and be an expert in that area having said that this also opens up a lot of opportunity for youngsters Uh, people in the technology side for example people working in cyber security space um, for that matter people working in data analytics space they can all come to internal audit because internal audit is is embracing all these and much more so any skill set uh, people have whether it is a domain experience or a specialized experience in fraud investigation for example those guys can also look at internal audit as a career so youngsters aspiring to become internal audit uh, pick up an area of their uh, choice become an expert in that move to internal audit function and acquire the internal audit skill sets there and become a seasoned professional in that that domain i think that is how i see the future of internal audit as the the people actually the people part of internal audit is going to grow so you touched upon again people attributes i would call them so i just put you in the hot seat and ask you a few attributes and would want you to rate them on the scale of 1 to 10 uh, so communication of course it's very important Um, eight out of ten. Qualifications? Uh, I'll not say that is not important, but definitely that is not right at the top for my agenda. Um, six out of ten. Uh, stakeholder management? Eight out of ten. Empathy? Nine out of ten. Without empathy, I think internal auditors cannot deliver what what we are expected to deliver. Absolutely, I I would probably rate this as ten. Collaboration? That's where I come as the ten. internal audit is not a siloed function whether it is within the internal audit function or within the business stakeholders say, uh, collaboration becomes the primary uh, thing for me actually for the success of the internal audit function so it's a 10 out of 
Independence and objectivity. Yes, it's important. An eight out of ten. And uh, team, team player. Yeah, again collaboration. I already touched upon that. You have to be a team player to deliver. Actually, um, you cannot be a silo. You cannot be a single person delivering something for internal audit as a function. I think actually it's all teamwork. So nine out of ten. So just to summarize, uh, could you please share with us uh, or the audiences what helps you to make your internal audit function a successful function? Because you have been heading the functions for the last more than a decade now. So just just a one liner for me. See, there are various factors which contributes to uh, to for a successful internal audit function to be really seen as value add within the organization. And when other people say that this function is successful, that is when it adds the meaning to us. Uh, if there is one cat attribute which I need to pick for a successful internal audit function, I will say it is agility. When I say agility, it's not about agile internal audit uh, execution of agile internal audit alone. No, that's not what it is. Adapting to the change, adapting to the new technology environment which is coming up, adapting to the new business challenges, adapting to the ever increasing r um, risk and c control environments which we are seeing. So these are all uh, part of your agility. So as long as you can demonstrate agility in all walks of your internal audit execution, whether it is at your planning stage, your uh, audit fieldwork stage, your reporting stage, or the way you, you look at the organization as a whole, all part comes part of agility. So for me, an agile internal audit function is a sure shot, uh, sure shot for a successful internal audit function. Thank you so much, Mr. Viju. And, and what I, I'll just share what I learned is to unlearn and then relearn is what is this is what agility is all about yeah. right so thank you so much mr viju thanks for your time thank you very Great much you. thank you very much Justin. thank you